And now I have the opportunity to introduce the reverend that's going to deliver the eulogy. He is the minister and pastor of Upper Room United Christian Assemblies. Let us welcome Reverend Rupert L. Rattray, Jr. Give an honor to the Holy Spirit, which is the head of my life. Dr. Bernard, I greet you. All of the dignitaries, all of the clergy, and especially the friends and family of Rochelle Boone, I'm just here to say I mourn with you. If I could just take a few minutes of time to just point your attention to the book of Esther. In the eighth chapter, I just want to read a few verses, and it says, Then the king held out the golden scepter towards Esther. So Esther arose and stood before the king and said, If it please the king, and if I have found favor in his sight, and then these things seem right before the king, and I be pleasing in his eyes, let it be written to reverse the letters devised by Haman, the son of Hamedita the Agagite, which he wrote to destroy the Jews, which are in all the king's provinces. For how can I endure to see the evil that shall come to my people? How can I endure to see the destruction of my kindred? And the king Ahasuerus said unto Esther the queen, and to Mordecai the Jew, Behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and him have I hanged upon the gallows, because he laid his hands upon the Jews. Write ye also for the Jews as it liketh you, and in the king's name, and seal it with the king's ring. For it is written, which is written in the king's name, and sealed with the king's ring, may no man reverse. Our God and our eternal Father, Lord, we thank you today. Father, we're looking to you because we need a word from you. Father, we're looking for comfort, we're looking for strength. And we're turning to the one place where we know it is guaranteed. It is at your mercy seat. So at this time, let your word be our strength. And we will give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. The Bible speaks about a woman named Esther. Esther was a woman who found favor in the eyes of the king. While she was queen, there was an edict put to destroy her people. And Esther used her privilege. She used her access to the king. She used her influence with the king to make a difference. Her people would have been destroyed if Esther didn't make a difference. Now, I know we have a lot of clergy here that's saying this is not the usual celebration of life message. And I would respond to them by saying, well, this isn't the usual life that we're celebrating. I had the honor of meeting with Rochelle in the hospital a few weeks ago. And when I went into the hospital and went up to the floor, I immediately knew what floor I was on. And when I got to that floor, I heard this distinct sound that is so uncommon to that floor. And as I started to get closer and closer to the room, the sound got more distinct. And I opened her door and realized that was the sound of laughter. I sat there, and then I was in a maze, because then I walked in, and there she is on the bed with a smile on her face. I mean, a radiant smile, a bright smile, that same infectious smile that New Yorkers have come to love over the past few decades. And I was caught off guard because I went there to lift her spirits. But in turn, she lifted mine. And as I sat next to her bed, she said these words to me. She said, I made a difference. It, it, it blew my mind because now I'm realizing that as she's going through her list of accomplishments, that I am sitting here and I'm witnessing a Lifetime Achievement Award acceptance speech. But what I realized was missing from her list of accomplishments is she never once mentioned her illustrious career. 
She never once mentioned the multiple awards. She never mentioned the trips. She never mentioned the TV shows that she got to make guest appearances. And what she spoke about was the people. She spoke about the people who she made a difference in their life. She spoke about the people whose careers would not be where they are if she had not played a role. She said, I made a difference. And she said, I am fulfilled. I am at peace. I am in a good place. And this smile on my face is because I made a difference. And she spoke that into my life and I realized that sometimes we get so concerned about making a dollar that we never take the time to make a difference. <laughs> Rochelle left that message with me and I realized that she connected with real New Yorkers. And some of us want to wonder, how is it that she connected with real New Yorkers? It's a simple, it's a simple process. It's because Rochelle Boone was a real New Yorker with a real New York story. Migrated to this country at a young age? That's a real New York story. Had to figure out how to assimilate into the culture that is different from you? That's a real New York story. Having to, and you know, and I've been hearing this about Brooklyn and Queens, Brooklyn and Queens. Can somebody remind them that this all started in the Bronx? Because if it wasn't for the Bronx, <laughs> but she had a real New York story. Working two jobs, being a big sister to two brothers while putting yourself through school, that's a real New York story. Keep pushing knowing that I have purpose. No matter what is coming against me, I must continue to fight to get where I am. That is the real New York story. Understanding that if I can make it here, I can make it anywhere. That is the real New York story. No wonder she spent her whole career telling the truth about real New York stories. As I sat there in the hospital, she said these other words to me, which caught me off guard. She looked at me and she said, I'm rich. She said, I'm just so rich. You were with me in the hospital. She just kept saying, I'm so rich. And, and I sat there for a minute and I'm saying, well, Rochelle, you don't have to rub it in. <laughs> I kind of imagined that you were doing well. She says, no, I'm filthy rich. And then I realized that she tapped in to a different economy. What she was talking about was completely different from what I had in mind. The wealth that she was telling me about does not get accumulated through Ponzi and pyramid schemes. <laughs> The wealth that she was talking about does not get accumulated by backbiting co-workers and, and, and tearing people down on your way up. The wealth that she was talking about was a little bit different. This is the type of wealth that's accumulated when you put your arms around an intern who's nervous around... Am I, am I talking to somebody? This is the type of wealth that's accumulated when you see someone who's stuck and, and you help push them forward. This is the type of wealth that's accumulated when you meet someone who's on the verge of giving up, but you provide that inspiration to help them get to the next step. And she looked at it and said, I am filthy rich. The wealth that she was talking about, this currency that she was talking about was the currency called love. And I want to tell you today that this love is the inherent nature of God. This nature that gets expressed through every transaction. Todd, Jackson, Alva, Durant, Carl. I just want to remind you that she left an amazing inheritance. I want to let you know that there will be no shortage of love wherever you go because she was rich. 
The Bible says a wise man leaves an inheritance for their children's children. I'll come on, somebody. That there is love that will continue for generations because of the seeds that were sown, because of the investments that were made. I just want to tell you that she tapped into a different currency, and you are the benefactors of it today. Can somebody just give them a round of applause for that? I don't have a lot of time left, so I'm going to get straight to the point. I want to address the elephant in the room. And that wasn't a political joke. I don't have a heaven or a hell to send someone to. But what I do have is a copy of the Word of God. And this Word tells me That no man cometh to the Father but by me. Which tells me I can't contribute my way. You can't donate your way. There's no entrance by benevolence. There's no entrance by philanthropy. He says there is only one way and I am the way, the truth and the light. And I stand here today and I'm encouraged because I have been a witness that I can stand here to say that Rochelle Boone chose the way. Rochelle Boone made the choice. Rochelle Boone said, I am at peace with my father because I have made Jesus my soon and coming king. She made the choice. But what about you? You see, this is a reality that one day we all must face. This is an appointment that we can't reschedule. Not making a choice is a choice. Rochelle made that choice to say that Jesus made the difference. And I believe that today, She has access to the king, just like Esther did. And she's still making petitions on our behalf, just like Esther did. And she is, until this day, still making a difference. Todd, she's still making a difference. New York City, she's still making a difference. New York One, she is still making a difference. My time is up, I gotta go, but I'm just gonna ask everyone besides the immediate family, if you could just stand to your feet for one second and give a standing ovation to a life well lived, a heart well loved for the difference that is made. Thank you.